Good morning. We are going to talk to you this morning. I'm, um, okay. I've got, um, okay, I'm going to show you what I'm doing so you know what's going on. Um, Tuxedo, I'm going to show you all of him. He's a big boy. This is Mummy's boy. And, oh yeah, there you see my mush boy. Okay, Tuxedo doesn't feel good today, so he's, um, he is extremely loving. Yes, I know, you can hold your head up there, that's fine, we show his love. So, he doesn't feel good, his belly hurts, um, he got into the, um, the, the thing that we, um, cast iron skillet. Um, my son cooked in it and, um, he, um, he seasoned it and Tuxedo got a hold of the, um, paper towel, tore it up, didn't eat it all, but ate enough to upset his belly. I think it, I think it, but look at these feet. And his face. This is my boy. So, I'm sorry if I'm if it's hard to see me, but he doesn't feel good. So we got to, we have to love. So, anyways, I had ended our conversation. Okay, let's try to get cozy. He's such a big boy. Yeah, he's such a mommy's boy. Just put your head there. Okay. So we had to um we ended our conversation with um me talking about my. Wolf Parkinson White Syndrome, and um, what it is, it's just extra electrical pathways in my heart that interferes with the um, the my heartbeat, and I can go into arrhythmias, and I have, so um, I ended up having a heart ablation back in 2015 um, to fix that, and I. Um, I didn't, I went to heaven. I coded, I died, and I went to heaven. So I'm saying that because there's things that I know already because I've been there, but that don't seem to help in terms of when I'm thinking about my son. Okay, hold on for a minute. He's a big boy, but he's, he's needing to get more comfortable, and of course, I'm needing to get more comfortable, and in a minute he's gonna slap me because I need to rub him at the same time that I'm holding him. Um, and if you notice, I, I'm wearing the same thing I wore yesterday because I've lost 110 pounds, and I don't have, um, I won't buy clothes um, because I'm not done losing. So I have no idea what size to wear, and I will not buy new clothes until I know that that they're going to fit. But one good thing, the, the dress I'm wearing was a shirt at one point. And, um, excuse me, and um, it was a shirt at one point. And now it's a dress. I'm kind of proud of that. And um, the, um, and the, and when I, you have pants that are too big, I'm going to give you a hint, when you've lost 110 pounds, your panties are too big. In fact, um, I had a, a horrifying incident. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Then we're gonna, and it'll get, I'm gonna go right into talking about Joshua. Okay, it's just mommy's boy. Hold on for a second. I'm sorry. Oh my God, it's just mommy's boy. It's mommy's. Boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, I don't know when you have to go potty. Okay, I don't want your belly hurting. He's got a belly ache. Anyways, um. Sophie's on the couch. I'm sure that you'll see her too because today we're going to do, I'm going to talk to you a lot today. Um, oh, look at his tongue out. Look at that. Look at, oh, that's not his tongue. Okay, he's a tuxedo and um, he has weight right there. And, um, well, he's so big. There's the other weight spot. That's his tuxedo. Anyways, so. Um, <clears throat> I, um, and so when I say that, I've already been there. I know what to expect, but I'm, I don't want to go. And, um, so we, uh, we, we've already been through that. And Tuxedo is a interesting, um, interesting in that 
Would you let me just get comfortable? I know you want me to rub you, but you keep moving and I keep flipping and it's hard and your, your head is as big as all of me almost. So, okay, so let me rub him at the same time and we can talk. So when um, d d he does snore, when he gets really, really, really happy and he purrs a little bit too, so you might hear that. Tuxedo is a golden doodle, and Tuxedo was given to me by, I think she's an angel. Um, and I truly believe that she is an angel because of what she has done for me um, with him. A um, woman that is an angel actually gave me this beautiful dog who is a bred service dog who acts like a service dog and he's a pistol and the story behind that just real quick was my husband didn't want him at the time we already had three dogs I don't have the sense God gave a stump I love animals I will bring them home I will beg I will cry I will do anything that I can do to get them should have seen what I did last week over a tiny baby kitten little kittens paws this size, right? The tip of my finger, the tip of my little finger, tiny baby. Sorry, I have a bruise on my um, my thumb. Um, tiny baby, just born. And um, about two weeks, maybe a week, two weeks old. So anyways, with Tuxedo, my friend, um, and this is how we became friends. She called me or contacted me and asked me if I wanted a golden doodle puppy and of course I said yes but then I couldn't because I knew that my husband would not allow it and my son wasn't too keen on it either all right hold on for a second I'm gonna move and I know this is so irritating okay okay she's your mama's your boy guys here we should go mama's okay there I think we're in a good position now he's comfortable um I, uh, my husband said no, but we were um, getting ready for me to have my ablation the next day. And um, ablations can be pretty serious. They don't, they can be pretty benign too, but they can cause problems. And so we knew that my Wolf Parkinson White is pretty, was pretty serious. And um, so my, I was getting upset to be honest with you, I was manipulating to get him. But who wouldn't? I really did. I really was manipulating. When I started to cry in the store, that wasn't real. Um, I would I only do that to get dogs and cats and anything I could get a hold of. I want a baby pig, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, so anyways, the reality is, is that I manipulated my way to get my beautiful boy, Tuxedo. And um, my husband said that we could get him as long as I promised that I would not die during my heart ablation. And um, I did. Um, promised him I would not die. And I went in for my heart ablation, and I did. And um, I came back. See what I mean? He's going to insist on being wrong. Um, and I came back. So this is the story of Tuxedo. Tuxedo is one of our greatest loves. There's no question in my mind. I'm not fooled. I know what he is. I know what Sophie is. They are angels covered in fur. There's just no question. So he's my, um, he, this is my boy. So we're going to go into Joshua, to um, my um, feelings about my husband and then I will go into talking about my son um, I'm not going to use my son's name um, he, and that is why I keep saying my son because he doesn't want me to use it um, so when I um, why my son and um, and I went and got tuxedo together and um, so he's very, very important to everybody. But it's, he's a, my husband adores him. So um, <clears throat> as I said, I love my husband. And my biggest fear is that if I die, he will be unhappy. 
and I don't want that. I don't want him to be alone. I want him to be happy, and I won't die because that's the biggest lie there is. If there's ever a lie, ever, if you ever wondered, the biggest lie you will ever hear is that there is death. That's not true. But this isn't about that. This is, all right, talks, okay, now maybe we've got it. This isn't about that. This is about living and um, what what that is and um, and how I did it. But I have to talk to you about the pain of being concerned about my death. Um, my, I actually at one point, um, picked somebody for my husband that I wanted him to marry um, in case I pass. And I've chosen that person, and my husband is not happy about it. My, everybody, my family, they think I'm weird because I've actually chosen her. I've chosen her specifically. She would make him very happy. She is gorgeous. And... And that's the time, I love him that much. I know who would, how he would be happy. And, um, well, I know he would really only be happy with me, but that's not the point. The point is, is that I love him. And um, I, because of that love for him, and I worry about him, I've, um, I've spent so much of my time worrying about how he would be if things turn out different than, than what we hope. And um, I actually asked my son to take care, make sure that he would always take care of his dad. And I know that that's not fair, and I don't mean that he's going to physically take care of him. I mean, just be there um, and always make sure that he's not alone and that he's loving and that he's got somebody to love and even if it's you know it's the animals and our son I don't want him to be alone I want my husband to know that he has been the love of my life and everything that I am everything that I became